Hello, welcome to Board Game Bonkers. I'm Jay Sears, and today we're going to look at the best value board games priced at £60 or higher. Now, many of these games are substantially more expensive than £60, well over £100, but these do pack a punch. Now, there's a lot of games in here that are complex, but I will let you know which games as we go along. Now, this was a tough list, and I have squeezed one onto an honourable mention, because there's them in an island, but which list? What do I put on? What do I take off? Now, this list could have been actually been in any order, so please don't get hung up on the order of this too much. These are all games worth checking out. Now, before we dive into the list, please do consider subscribing to the channel. If you've just popped onto this and you haven't already subscribed for more great content and videos such as this. And also check out the others in this series where we've looked at best value board games at various different price points. Now, with that out of the way, let's dive straight in to our honorable mention, and that is On Mars. Now, this is probably one of the most, if not the top five most complex board games you will ever play. Now, this comes in at a price point of £125. Now, it's quite difficult to pick up in the UK, but you can pick up secondhand in really good condition for £125, or you may be able to get it in different other countries, brand new shrink wrapped. So, what do you do on Mars? Well, in each round, it consists of two phases. So you've got this colonization phase and you've got a shuttle phase. Now, in the colonization phase, players will take turns with actions depending on their board position. Now, in orbit, actions include acquiring blueprints, purchasing technologies, and retrieving supplies. On the planet's surface, players will construct buildings, upgrade them, and you'll be gathering scientists and contracts and exploring the planet with rovers that you've got. Now, in the shuttle phase, players can travel between the colony and the space station. That's a tricky part of this game, trying to figure out when to travel back and forth because you can't miss the shuttle. Now, buildings on Mars are interconnected. Each one is crucial for that colony growth. Now, this is a complicated part of how things interlink. Oxygen shelters require oxygen generated by plants, which need water, and that water is extracted from ice, which requires power get it and then it's generated by mining minerals which in turn need colonists so you can see how things interconnect now you'll be upgrading your resource production which is really vital as your colony expands and requires more shares to ensure survival for your people now players will aim to complete missions that are set out and once three missions are accomplished the game finishes now this is a complex game there's a lot going on there's a lot of depth involved in this but it's definitely one worth considering if you like really complex games. But be warned, this will be one, if not the most complex game you'll ever play. Now let's move on to our top 10. Starting with our number 10, that's Kanban EV. This is a complex heavy game as well. This comes in about £100. You can pick this up. Now there is a simpler car similar game like this automania so you want something more streamlined then pick that one up but this is complex crunchy it's got a lot of depth into it so what do you do in kanban ev well in kanban over the course of the game players are taking the role of rookie employees now you need to manage supplies and supplies for car parts I mean suppliers sorry so what you do is you'll improve and invade automobile parts with these parts you're getting from suppliers and creating your own supplies yourself and you'll be impressing the factory manager there's a twist this would actually come to in just a moment. Now you want to try and carry out actions on the board from the bottom to the top if possible. Now this means you'll get designs first for your cars, then you'll be able to get car parts that you'll need to assemble the cars with, and then you'll need to go to the assembly to spit out the cars that you produced, and then you'll need to go to the test track to either buy the cars or upgrade the cars themselves. Now sometimes other people will do that work for you and you can benefit from that and you can therefore skip some of those steps. Now if you have some banked shifts saved up which you can do over the course of the game you can then go to administration and do multiple different things in one turn. Now you must make use of the recycling facilities and the limited factory supplies in order to make parts when suppliers come up short. 
because the factory must also run at optimal efficiency. Now, what's going to happen is Sandra, this factory manager, will be moving around and be, she'll be reviewing your performance and it can punish you quite heavily. So you're trying to work out which action spots you'll be going to. It's a bit of working placement here. And then you'll be working out the best efficiency to carry those actions out. Keep in mind, Sandra, may punish you if you're not working efficiently. This is a heavy, complex involved game now if you want something simple i did recommend automobile which is much easier or automania can't quite remember but this is certainly involved if you like cars as a theme and the kind of manufacturing production of that you'll really enjoy this game there's a lot going on that is heavy and crunchy indeed so let's now move on to our number nine and that is the great wall Coming in at £130. I was aiming in RM where to put this on the list because I felt it's quite pricey for the gameplay, but it is very enjoyable for a lot of board gamers. Now, I'm not enamoured by this, but I felt that I had to go on the list because I know how much enjoyment a lot of people get out of it. This is a semi court game. I'm not a fan of semi corps, but I know a lot of people do enjoy this. It also has a court mode, which I personally prefer. So, what do you do? in the Great Wall. Well, players are taking the role of these generals. Essentially, you'll just be putting these meeples, or characters out to carry out your actions. Let's win that in a second. You'll be defending the wall against these Mongol hordes that'll be coming out, these are cards that'll be coming out. Now, the game is played over a series of tons called years. They each divide into four parts, which is your seasons. Now, during the spring, what you'll do is you'll draw new hard cards, and you'll be placing them out in the fields which are in front of the Great Wall. Now, when summer comes round, that's the next phase, and that's when you prepare for the assault and mobilise and place in your forces, so your troops, etc., on or behind the wall. Now, during fall, players will then take their turns, and what you'll be doing is you'll get your hand to hand of command cards, I'm choosing a card to play and then you'll be resolving the effect of those cards and they go in a particular order in terms of what turn order you're on. You'll then activate the locations again for various benefits by placing your PCs onto those spaces. You'll be sharing those spaces with other players and a certain spaces require a certain number of PCs to go onto them. So for example, if you want gold, you're going to need to go to a certain spot and you might require three different people to go there, a total of three. So sometimes you might have to use all three of your own to go there or you can negotiate with other players to say, why don't you come and join me? We can both get gold and benefit there. But sometimes it could be backstabbing because a player can say, I'm going to help you and go there. Then on their turn, they might say, actually no, and they're going to go here instead. So you have to be careful with that. Now what you're trying to do is build up the wall to place your people or troops onto the wall or behind the wall. So you have archers, your spearsmen, etc. And then you're trying to defend that wall collaboratively together because the wall collapses and goes completely, then you've all lost. You can put barricades out as well to slow down the hard and you'll get benefits from doing so and you get benefits from building and contributing to the wall. It's a really fascinating game, bit of a worker placement, collaboration, working together to try and get as many resources as possible. And you can also jointly work towards the wall. When you do work towards the wall, jointly contribute to it, you will get rewarded for that. So there's a bit of give and take, but there's also a bit of backstabbing that's involved, which I'm not too keen on, which is why I prefer the cooperative mode of this game. It looks lovely on the table. It's only got a presence with those miniatures and those upgraded pieces, or you have the standard standee pieces, depending on which version you pick up. So if you want to fork a bit more money, well, then go for the miniatures instead. So let's now move on to our number eight. And this is another complex heavy game. Now, the Great Wall is fairly complex, but this one is even more complex. And our number eight is... War of the Ring, the board game, second edition. Now, this comes in, you can pick it up about £80, which is a really good deal for the amount of game debt you get into it. Now, I will say this works best with two players because you have two competing armies. So, what do you do in War of the Ring? Now, each turn will involve around the roll of action dice. So, each die corresponds to an action that a player can do during the turn. Now, depending on the face rolled from each die, you can move armies, 
move your characters, you can recruit troops, and you can advance on the political track. Now, action dice can also be used to draw or play event cards. Now, event cards are played to represent specific events from the story or events that might possibly have happened. Now, each event card can also create an unexpected turn in the game, allowing special actions or altering the course of the battles that might be happening. The battles are resolved primarily through card use. Now, the game can be won by military victory if Sarun conquers a certain number of free people's cities and strongholds. The Fellowship of the Ring, on the other hand, is trying to get secretly to Mount Doom to destroy the One Ring. So you've got this tug and pull and you're trying to strategically work out how you're going to manoeuvre and complete your objective to win the game. There's a lot involved in this. I've given you a very brief overview summary of how the game might play. But believe you me, this is a long, lengthy game and definitely works best with two players. If you like warm, highly thematic games, you might enjoy this one. So let's now move on to our next one, our number seven. And this is Zombie Side Second Edition. And you can pick this up for £85. Do you love a lot of dice chucking? A lot of zombies? A lot of miniatures? Then check this one out. So what do you do in Zombie Side? Well, players are taking the role of survivors. Now, you must cooperatively work together. It's a cooperative game in order to survive and thrive in this world where you can be overrun and, believe you me, by a lot of zombies. Now, you'll be finding guns in different gear to help you and to fight zombies through these different 25 scenarios. So you'll be doing a lot of dice chucking. You'll be doing a lot of combat, a lot of shooting, a lot of beating up zombies, and you also get wounded as well. This is very thematic, and this is very uh, American trash. So you will be just chucking dice. There's not much strategy in this, apart from just running for your life and trying to kill as many zombies as you can to complete the scenarios. It's a really fun and engaging game. It's only family weight. So if you want something much later than more of the Ring, then Zombie Side might be your take. So let's now move on to our number six, and that is Nemesis, a very highly thematic game that essentially is Aliens the board game. You can pick this up for around £105. Prices do fluctuate sometimes, but this is a game with a lot of value in it. If you're looking for a really highly thematic alien game, then certainly have a look at this one. So what do you do in Nemesis? Well, this is a semi-quarter game in which you and your crew must, mates, with which you have different types and you have different abilities, must survive on a ship which is infested with Aliens, that's right, there's only aliens that will be coming out of a bag. You'll be drawing tokens from a bag to determine which aliens spawn on to the board. Now, to win the game, you have to complete one of the two objectives that will be dealt with you at the start of the game to get back to Earth in one piece. Now, you'll find many obstacles in your way doing this. There'll be aliens that will be coming out. There'll be poor physical conditions of the ship, so people will be destroying the engine. You'll be trying to get the engines to work. There'll be agendas held by your other fellow players. They'll have their secret objectives, and you're trying to work out a way of how you can get off the ship safely. Now, there's a partnership where you'll be going to to look at the destination of the ship because there'll be an objective on your card that say you must reach this de destination. So you might have to change that destination. You might have to go to the back of the ship to look at the engines, to fix the engines, to turn them on. Perhaps somebody's turned them off and sabotaged it. So you'll be doing lots of different things. Each room you go to gives you a different type of ability. You can carry out different actions. So each room is slightly different that you go to. And it can be a lot to try and remember that in terms of what the rooms each do. For example, you will go to the medics were quite simple to kind of help heal yourself and you'll be doing and discovering these room tiles you'll be flipping them over as you discover to find out what they are you can lock doors to stop others getting through to take away an action but you've got to kind of try and combat against the aliens that'll be spawning out as well and if that mother alien comes out believe you me it's almost not impossible to kill the thing unless you've got one particular character and you're really filled up with lots of guns and ammunition to take it down Really fun and exciting and very thematic, and it has that semi-corp element. This, for me, felt a lot better in its semi-corp than The Great Wall. I really enjoyed how this worked. And I'm not a fan of semi-corp, but this, for me, was the closest thing to actually working really well. It's very thematic, and certainly this is Aliens the Ball Game. Certainly worth checking out. So let's now move on to our next one that's number five. This is Heroes of Air, Land and Sea. This is quite an old game now. It was recently kickstarted. You can pick this up for around £70 or you can get the 
most recent Kickstarter version, but any version is fine. It's very little that's changed at all. So it's the same game. So what do you do in Heroes of Air, Land and Sea? Well, every round, players will execute two lead actions, and then you'll be having several follow actions of what your fellow players will be doing. So for resource gathering, you'll be ba it'll be based on controlled map areas to gather those resources. Now, what you'll be doing, this is area control. So during the turn, you carry out capital and command actions, replacing a worker on that specific area of your player board. Now, capital actions involves recruiting units, building structures, and taxing for resources. Now, other players can follow these actions if they have available workers to place on their player board to follow that action. Now, command actions involve moving your units around on the board, your vessels that you've got from getting, from getting across the sea, and casting spells. But these can't be followed by others. Now, combat takes centre stage as you'll be vying control of these regions and trying to overtake them. Now, when units clash on a specific region, so you've got units, opposing units on the same region, you'll be calculating your strength of your army against their army, and then you'll be strategically choosing a set of seven tactical cards to use. Now, you'll be able to use these, but you have to pay the cost that's indicated. And when you win the combat, you win the territory. And that's what you'll be doing throughout the whole game, trying to strategically work out the territories and trying to gain control of them. So if you love air control, this is a game that's certainly worth checking out. Thematic, it works really well. And the action selection on the board is really fascinating and a little bit different than other games. Although it's a little bit older now, it still holds up extremely well and highly recommended. Let's now move on to our next one, number four, and this is Scythe. And you can pick this for around 58, 60 pounds. Now Scythe has been around for a while. And very briefly inside, what you'll be doing is controlling these mechs. You'll be taking these mechs out, gather resources, and it's not just mechs, but your workers will be going out gathering resources. You can get mechs onto the board. You have this action selection board. So what you'll be doing is you'll be moving this piece onto a specific area of that player board to carry out that action. You can't carry out the same action twice. And you'll be able to upgrade your actions. And what you'll be able to do is take cubes off those particular action spaces that allow you to give you more powerful, better actions. And what you'll be doing is placing monuments out under the board as well. You'll be engaging in combat when you get mechs onto the board. Ultimately, you're trying to create and trying to You're trying to meet these objectives. Now, when you're meeting these objectives, you'll have your own specific objectives in your hand, but also everyone's got the universal objectives that will be having to be met. For example, if you win two combats, then you win a star. You place in the marker on the star to see if you completed that. You'll be completing gathering resources. You'll be looking at the board, trying to conquer the board, trying to gather as much resources, engage in some combat. There's not a lot of combat in this game. It's mostly carry an action out, put monuments out, gather resources, meet the objectives that are set out, and try and do that before the other players. Now, the frustrating thing is, somebody might complete those actions, or those objectives before you. However, you might be in that round ready to complete two or three in one go. Unfortunately, whoever completes it first, the game ends immediately. So it might be some uneven turns. But this does have a kind of strange theme to it where you're stepping back in time with these mechs. A lot of people love this game. The action selection is superb in how that functions. Now, I've given you a very brief overview, going into too much detail, but it's worth checking out if you like that kind of game. So let's now move on to number three. This is Lobotomy 2, the second edition, and that comes in about £110. Now, the original was uh, criticised slightly for being too long. They streamlined a lot of this game in the second edition, so what do you do? Well, Lobotomy is a cooperative scenario-based adventure dungeon crawler type of game where each player controls a different crazy cat in this asylum with your own phobias and abilities. Now players are working together cooperatively to try and escape the asylum but all the staff are evil monsters you must come up against. Now each scenario card advises players what the trigger for drawing the next scenario card will be and it's possible to have two or even three scenarios running at the same time. Now each character is in 
number of action points, usually three, sometimes two or four, which represent moving a space, making an attack, using an ability or searching for something, picking up a memory marker or similar. Now the dice is generally used to measure the strength of that action. Now once all uh, characters, characters have moved, one player will draw movement cards which relate specifically to the monsters and then that drive in that scenario. So it'll be, tell you how the what monsters moved and you moved the monsters in a specific direction. This is quite thematic. The characters are fairly unique and slightly different than what they do. And essentially, you're just trying to get out of this asylum, but you've got to complete these objective scenarios that are set out. Very thematic. Miniatures look absolutely great. If you like that kind of game, and you don't mind chucking dice, so look at the strength of the action. It actually works quite well. Yes, there's randomness, but it actually works quite well in this. Then check it out. So let's now move on to number two. This is one of the most highly acclaimed board games, that's Blood Rage. And you can pick this up for around £60. This is an area control game with epic card battles. So in Blood Rage, in this area control game, you control your own Viking clan warriors, your leader, and then you have a ship as well. You'll be invading these territories and pillaging the land for these rewards you'll be collecting, and you'll be crushing your opponents in these battles, fulfilling quests that you've got, and then upgrading as well. Now, you'll be guided by cards that are drafted at the beginning of each of the three realms known as Ages. Now, these cards will either increase your strength for battles, provide upgrades, or possibly summon the aid of legendary creatures. The battles are decided not only by the strength of the figures involved in that battle, but also by cards you play in secret. And you can also form allegiances with specific gods that will help you. So there's quite a lot going on there, but essentially you're trying to take over these territories. I love the card battle system. No luck, a lot of strategy involved in this. Really good epic game, some great miniatures. Highly recommend you check this out. So what is our number one? Well, our number one is... Maybe a shock to everyone, but I really do enjoy this game. And at £50, it gives a lot of good value. Civilization, a new dawn. Now, there's a caveat with this because I highly recommend you get the expansion, which is a bit of a nightmare to get. Now, in the UK, you have to import the expansion. But with it together, it makes a fantastic gaming civilization experience. So what do you do in Civilization, a new dawn? Well, if you're familiar with Sid Meier's Civilization, this essentially is it in board game form. Now, over the course of the game, you'll be expanding your empire. So you'll be going across this board, building your cities, you'll be gaining new technologies, essentially as these cards, I'll explain that in a second, and you'll be building wonders. Now, agendas are detailed um, on victory cards. So you have these different agendas, and three are drawn out during the setup, and players will be racing to become the first to complete one agenda of each of these victory cards to be trying to compete, try and get the first to actually complete those objectives or second, etc. Now, what you'll be doing, which is unique, you have this board laid out. It's a simple banner board, numbered from one to five, I believe, and the expansion is slightly bigger. And what you'll be doing is different terrains and layout these technology cards, they essentially are action cards. They're depending on the number they sit under, that is the strength of that action. And the terrain is linked to it. For example, if you're moving, then you need a specific terrain. The number represent the number of movements you can make. However, the terrain type is where the terrains you can go over that's less are up to that point. It's really fascinating it works because as soon as you carry an action out, you move that card to the bottom, all the cards slice and move up. So you'd be looking to try and work out the strength of the action Obviously, you want to use the cards that are four and five, they're much stronger, but sometimes you want an action that's down the bottom. And you've also got a dial to be able to upgrade as well, which will give you new technology cards. You'll be able to replace those action technology cards with better technologies that give you better actions. I really like how that system works. It's very thinky, and although it's fairly straightforward, I find this game much crunchier than a lot of the heavier games, for example, Through the Ages, which is considered a very complex civilization game. I actually find this more complicated than through the ages. It's just the way my brain works. But I really like how this thematically looks. I really like the, the feel of this game and what you're trying to do. And there's a lot going on. There's not a huge amount of combat. You will use, use combat. There's dice involved. 
combat is quite actually complicated and it certainly needed to be more streamlined than this. That's my one negative about this game. But I love that feel, that thematic sense of civilization. It certainly gives you that 4X feel. So that brings us to the end. Hope you've enjoyed this. And although I didn't give you a huge detail into all the games, I hope it gives you a sense and whether these games are for you or not. Now let us know in the comments down below, should there have been any games that could have been on this list? Now you could argue this list could have been done in any way and in any order. Now a lot of games I could have put on the, this, but I haven't because I simply haven't played them. For example, you could argue, well, why haven't you put the likes of Tainted Grail on? Why haven't you put The Witcher on? Because I haven't played those games. Now, perhaps this might change in the future, but at the moment, this is my top 10. I've been looking at this objectively, like I have throughout the whole series. Now, if I was doing this personally, I wouldn't be using the same list of games. It would be completely different, but I have to look at this objectively, and I think these games provide the best value for money at that certain price point. But you might think differently. We all have different tastes, but I hope you've enjoyed this. And as always, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button and give our videos a thumbs up. It really does help drive those videos up the charts so others can check them out. Until next time, I'm Jay Sears. Take care.